Right lads, welcome back to my team career mode. The Italian, not my team, it's driver career. You know what series this is. It's not the one I said first. But last time out at Zandvoort, we came back from a crash and qualified to finish 8th with the fastest lap. So close to 7th and 6th. We had P6 in our goddamn sights at the end of the race. But it was just too little too late. Leclerc won from uh, Verstappen P2 at his home race, and then Checo in P3, losing more ground at the top of the champ uh, the, in the championship fight. As Leclerc has checked out just a little bit up front, and last time out, Pierre Gasly was in the pit lane at the end of the, uh, the end of the first lap. This is what happened. Ignore the My Team mods. Um, I had my My Team mods as well when I captured this, but this is what happened to Pierre Gasly. He just into the back. Of Nicholas Latifi there in the Williams, I believe. Yeah, it was Latifi in the Williams. That's what happened to Gasly. That's why he was in the pit lane at the end of lap one. I just wanted to show that there. Like I said, excuse the My Team mods. When I captured that little bit there, then my My Team mods were installed. Because I was about to capture the um, replay camera for My Team Canada. Uh, which went up yesterday, if you didn't see it. Uh, but, anywho. Back to this, we have some points to spend, with uh, something coming on the power side of things at the end of the last episode. I believe it was the end of the last episode, but whatever, man. Just trying to think about what would be best to do ahead of Singapore. We, we're a bit behind on our chassis, you know, our chassis are looking like our best department, but we're a bit behind in terms of the other teams. Um, but anyway, we have a regulation change coming for next season, as you can just see there. Uh, Ferrari bringing upgrades to their home event, and well... I don't really care about the regulation game for this team. My aim is Ferrari next season, so I don't care too much about the reg change for Alfa Romeo, but I will be saving a point. Um, Alpine have made further upgrades as well, and calls up further to us. I was asked to march and overtake Alfa Tauri once again, has pulled further away from Williams. Red Bull also bringing in some upgrades as well to keep themselves at the top of the championship. No rain expected this weekend, thank God, Monza. Isn't the best, it, it, it's not the best track in the, the wet, uh, hello Fred Vasseur. I, I assume that's Fred Vasseur. We may see him in Ferrari colours next year. But who knows, let's get underway with this one shot qualifying lap. Uh, I'm not too shabby at Monza, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you on that one. I'm not that terrible at this track. So that's definitely going to be a benefit we go into the first chicane. Hitting this apex is lovely. Um, on the exit, a little bit twitchy on the rear end, that's going to lose us a bit of time as we make the run round. The Curva Grande now turn number three of this racetrack, keeping it close to the inside of the, of the track, the inside line, which was the outside line for the first part of the Del Roger chicane, over the curb a bit. I'm so thankful you don't get launched into the lower earth orbit anymore, because if I did a line like that in the last game, I would be in the lower earth orbit and with floor damage, I can guarantee you of that, but through Lesmo number two, and we're back to being quick as this is a very good lap so far. Uh, we seem to be trading fastest times at the moment with Sergio Perez. Who is currently just ahead of us. As we head into the Ascarge game. We've got a purple first sector. We were about 10th down heading out of sector 2. Now we're quicker. As uh, it's a decent launch out of Ascari for a change. The AI are very strong out of Ascari. I have found that on the last game. I find here now we're going to need a very good parabolic to get this P1 back from Checo. Uh, b back on the power as quickly as I possibly can be. Can cut it to the inside to minimize the distance and to make the run to the line. And I think we got it. I think that's Paul. Okay, good job, mate. Really well done. That was a drive. Yes, indeed it is Paul. By three milliseconds. Very, very close. Between me and Checo, only three milliseconds in it. And Verstappen, only six and a half, one hundreds behind. Uh, but we're on the front row alongside Sergio Perez, Verstappen is in behind us, then we have the two Ferraris, Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz, not separated by much, so they're followed by the two Mercedes, Russell and Hamilton, we've got Norris, Ocon, um, Alonso, Gasly, Ricardo, Bottas, Sonoda, Vettel, Stroll, Magnussen, Schumacher, Albon and Latifi taking up the normal spots in 20th place when someone else doesn't crash or have a shit qualifying. Sorry Latifi, I'm being brutally honest here. Um, but we've got pole position. This could be very good for us in our battle with McLaren. Let's, well, now we're just going to see what we can do from pole. Let's head to the grid and see what we can do from here for the Italian Grand Prix. 
Welcome back to one of only two countries that has held a race every year since the very first Formula One World Championship in 1950. It is, of course, Italy, one of the great racing nations. And it's time to get underway for the Italian Grand Prix. We're 12 miles northeast of Milan for today's Grand Prix at a Monza circuit where we can expect top speeds of around 215 miles per hour. 11 corners on this 3.6 mile track with seven of those coming in the form of chicanes and with a good slipstream and DRS open there should be plenty of opportunity for some passing here today. It's time to take a look at our starting grid for today's race. It's Alfa Romeo in pole position. Sergio Perez lines up alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid we have Verstappen, Leclerc, Carlos Sainz and Russell. Hamilton, Norris, Ocon, and Fernando Alonso. Gasly, Ricardo, Valtteri Bottas, and Sonoda. Vettel, Stroll, Kevin Magnussen, and Mick Schumacher. Albon, and Nicholas Latifi. Which of these talented drivers will come out on top today? Anthony Davidson, a lot of talented drivers out on the track today. But what will stand out for you? My focus is 100% on the front of the grid. Like you said, we're seeing a lot of strong competition across those positions, so it would be super interesting to see the fight for that front spot. Personally speaking, I'm hoping for plenty of overtakes. This is our engine supplier's home Grand Prix. Let's give them a race worth watching. Oh, it'll be a race worth worth watching. It worth watching, and there will be plenty. There will be plenty of overtakes. I trip over my tongue ten million times in the space of one sentence. It's Monza on an F1 game. Monza in real life has a risk of being a little boring. On the F1 games, however, it is normally a slipstream overtake madness. If we get the formation lap underway, if I can get a clean start like that, but a bit quicker on the main start, then that'll be absolutely lovely. If I can get a good start, you know what I said, if we get another spa, we're right in there with McLaren as we lock up horribly in the turn one. But at least it was only, it was only the formation lap and that actually helps us if we're getting tired, it helps the temperature. Uh, to try and keep the pack close together as we're forming back up to the grid now. And hopefully we can nail the parking like we did last episode. We nailed it last time. And we overshoot it okay, this time. The best placement there, mate. Let's try and get a good launch as the race starts. Mate, you say it like I want it to be 10 meters to be further back in my grid so I'll wait for Latifi to park it up in 20th place and then when he does we can get this race underway as soon as the five lights will go out ahead of us they're all on five lights on ahead of us they're out and we are racing at monza it's a slow start from us it's a good start from sergio powers it's straight past us into the lead there's leclerc alongside us they're three wide behind us as we head into the first corner we're on the grass we're going deep into the first corner Paris is clear into the lead leclerc's in second there's george russell getting up into third he's had a good start we're, we're down we've gone from pole position down to fifth now, it's about a match for staffing it. Well, this has not been the start we were looking for, but hopefully we can get back past this Red Bull into the Del Roger chicane. It's a good place to make it over there. We're close enough, and we've got the move done just about keeping it on the racetrack. And Bottas is at a brilliant start. Bottas is up in the eighth place already. I think it was five for seven for one point. What a start from our teammate, but it's Sergio Perez leading the way for Red Bull then from Charles Leclerc running in second, George Russell in third, we're in fourth, Verstappen is behind us in fifth, Sainz is in sixth, Norris seven, Bottas up to eight from 13th, five places gained from Alonso Hamilton, round out, pardon me, the top ten of side by side action behind us, as there goes Fernando Alonso trying for Valtteri Bottas, not quite working out for him. But Alcon and Ricardo are side by side, Alcon ahead of the, of the Australian in the McLaren car. Could that invite some action down into the Parabolica? As it's half a second between Perez and Leclerc who made a good start. They both made good starts. It's happening at the rear of the field with Magnussen and Latifi. Albon's lost a place. Latifi is trying to gain another place. As I think we could be about to see an overtake for the lead. Leclerc is not waiting for the DRS. He's going for it now. You can see overtakes happening in the background as well. With Lance Stroll and Daniel Ricciardo. As Leclerc is trying to get the lead of the race if he can. He'll send Monza absolutely crazy. He's going to have to wait on that one though. As Carlos Sainz trying to get involved there with Marcus Happ and not quite able to. As uh, Vice Stroll getting ahead of Daniel Ricciardo. Schumacher ahead of Gadsley. Latifi ahead of Magnussen. And this was the start from Baltas. He started in 13. What a getaway. What a launch. What a second phase of the start. 
He did the average grade to start. I would do starting further back up on it. He sent it in the turn one. Very brave on the brakes from Valtteri Bottas. Holy shit. What a getaway from our teammate. He was in P7 there for a moment. He is in P7 now. Because Norris is still on the outside. And Norris will get that place in towards the Del Roger chicane. But that was a hell of a start from our teammate as he thought, Norris thought for a second there he could go for science. Uh, but Leclerc also made a very good start indeed. He made a brilliant start. Perez did as well. Well, we just did not get off the line, plain and simple. We just did not get the line. See me going way too deep into the first corner. And that compromises me for turn two because the line becomes a bit tighter. Uh, but anyway, back to the action. And Leclerc is a lot closer to Perez this time around. He's going to be having another go as, as uh, Gasly tries to get back past Mick Schumacher into the final corner. Stroll's gone off horribly wide there. As I think he was battling with Ricardo again. Gasly's ahead of Schumacher, but for how much longer? Leclerc's going for the lead once again. The default will be cheering him on, but he's not quite able to get it just yet. He has to wait in behind us. There is Fernando Alonso. Um, be trying to defend from Lewis Hamilton. Hamilton is behind Alonso at the moment. Hamilton's not had a very good start. The two Aston Martins fight out over the 15th place. Vettel just ahead of Stroll at this present moment in time. Um, as we are finally back within a second of the top three. Uh, which is very, very good for the DRS. Russell has the fastest lap at this present moment in time. Uh, hopefully we can maybe try and challenge for that fastest lap at some point. As that was all sorts of almost screwing it up there. Don't know why Jeff wanted to change the strategy. I have absolutely no idea, but I'm sticking to pitting on lap 5. As uh, Leclerc is close right now. He is close. Get a good launch off of the parabolic off of his car. He has got a decent launch. As that is Hamilton getting past Alonso. Alonso, that was horribly deep into the... Sh into, the sh into a scary from Alonso. My god. Could Alcon and Ricardo get involved? Alcon's already getting involved with his teammate. We saw the two go wheel have a bit few um, close calls on track um, this last this last year, 2022, in real life. We've not seen it yet this year. Leclerc got the DRS on on Perez. He's going for the inside line for turn one into the corner. That's going to give him the outside for turn two and arguably the better line for the exit. And Leclerc takes the lead of the Grand Prix. Perez still right with him as Fernando Alonso is still under pressure from Esteban Ocon, Alonso's gonna hold on to that one for the time being as we can see Perez still right on the tail of Charles Leclerc, Perez is going for it as they made the run down towards the Del Rogi chicane, Perez on the inside, he's retaking the lead this is brilliant racing between the two championship contenders here at the Italian Grand Prix, Russell having a look on the inside of Leclerc, nothing doing there for the Mercedes and if anything that's helped us out, a right treat because we are now right on the tail of the Mercedes car. That was a lovely transition, I must say. I don't know, I like that transition. Well, probably because maybe because it's something to do with the same engine noise. I don't know. But we're on the tail of George Russell. We're trying to get back onto the podium. And we're through and up into third place. We're back in the podium places. And Leclerc will, I'm sure, be having another go at the lead. I don't know where my back end was going there, but it was not going to the exit. It, it wanted to become the front end as Leclerc on the inside of the Parabolica. If he can get this move on, he's done it. Monza will be going crazy at that one. The fans will be loving that move as the two Alpine cars are still battling it out. You hardly know where to look. There is action absolutely everywhere you look. Perez is coming back at Leclerc now. On the run down to the first corner, Russell's getting involved as with Carlos Sainz in the background. Sainz trying to get up into the top five. Leclerc defended the lead as they exit the corner and George Russell is still ahead of Carlos Sainz. If Sainz can get up into the top five, then Mondo will absolutely love it. Is it three wide on the exit of the, of the first chicane? Ricardo getting past both Alpine cars. We're still battling it out. Over the final points paying position, Ricardo still alongside Alcon on the exit. Pierre Gasly getting involved now. You hardly know where to look. There's action absolutely everywhere. Ricardo ahead of Alcon, ahead of Gasly, ahead of Lodz, who's all of a sudden gone. In the mass relapse, he's gone from ninth place all the way down to 13th. He's lost multiple places though. That has not worked out at all for the Spanish driver. It is actually quite warm in here for once. I don't know why, maybe it's got something to do with this action-packed race. I don't know, but this is the first time it's been warm in my bedroom all week. I'm going to be perfectly honest with you, it's been bloody cold here. Verstappen is right on our tail as we make the run down 
to the Parabolic. We're going to be pitting in at the end of this lap, end of lap five, as we try and fend off Max Verstappen round the corner. We've successfully managed to do so. As we see, is Leclerc coming in? Yes, he is. Leclerc's in, as are we. Pardon me. Uh, that's a bit of action on the main story I didn't capture. I missed that bit of action there with Norris and Sainz and Russell. Hang on a minute. I'm going to have to go back and have a look at that one as we make the turn in into our pit box. Uh, it's going to have to be a good stop for Sam with right on our tail. Are we still ahead? We're barely ahead. We've ghosted into each other. I'm delighted as well, Elvis. As we exit the pit lane now, we are just ahead of Max Verstappen as it Jeff Lee's he finished the race on this compound. I'm, I will go back and, let's go back and have a look at that, no, whatever the fuck just happened on the main thread with Norris, Russell and Sainz as we're exiting in P13. Um, and we'll continue on our way here. Perez still to make a stop, as is basically everybody ahead of Leclerc. He's still net P1 and he's got plenty of clean air ahead of him to not get held up by anyone. Um, the, the Tifosi will absolutely love it if he could maintain the lead of the Grand Prix. And I would love it if I could stay ahead of Max Verstappen while we're warming up our tyres here on the outlap. And hopefully we won't lose out to anybody because Sainz and Russell weren't that far behind. Um, but the moment of the race here is how, how close will it be between Perez and Leclerc on the pit exit? Perez is going to be coming into the pit lane right now. 80 kilometres an hour, he's in the pit lane. Norris, Sainz and Russell are in, in the background as well as Sonoda and Magnussen are swapping places. I just saw hard tires coming out of Mercedes. Mercedes, what are you doing? Why are you putting hard tires under George Russell's car? Well, he's not going to be a threat then. Bottas is also into the pit lane. Um, as there's Perez exiting the pit lane now. Here's Leclerc down the main straight. And Leclerc is clear and still in the lead of this Grand Prix. Meanwhile, with ourselves, this is what's been going on. Mainstream Verstappen ahead of us. We've been playing DRS games again with Max Verstappen. Come on, it's not going to be a race at Monza from me without DRS games into the last corner and down the main street. There's going to be DRS games played. I'm going to be honest with you on that one. Um, but will we be maintaining our net third place? It's gonna be close with, with Lando Norris here. Uh, we are clear. Norris has made up a lot of ground in this pit phase, but we are still in what is a net third place in this Grand Prix. We've lost out a little bit to Leclerc and Perez. Leclerc, um, about a second and a half clear of Perez. As there is the two Alpine cars getting very close for comfort. Why the hell is Alcon on hards? I do not know. Pardon me. Well, mind you, I think people were probably asking that at Monza in 2019 when Leclerc went on to the hard times, but it actually worked out for him quite nicely. And let's just savor this for one moment. There is a Schumacher leading a race again. Let's just savor this moment as Mick Schumacher leads the Italian Grand Prix. Um, not for Ferrari, perhaps, but still a Ferrari powered team nonetheless. Uh, we've got Max Verstappen right on our tail to make the run down towards the Ascari chicane. He was looking on the inside, it's not quite worked out for him there. As George, as George Russell is overtaken by Carlos Sainz, Russell on those hard tires is... If he's on hard tires, I don't know. I think he's on hard tires, that might have been Hamilton actually, I don't know. But Lando Norris is getting involved with Max Verstappen in the background just behind us. Um, Norris on the inside, he's trying to get fourth place, net fourth place in this race. It will be actual fourth place as Mick Schumacher is in the pit lane now for the Haas team. Norris is still in behind, they've got to be careful, they're going to invite Carlos Sainz in if these two are not careful. Because he is right there looming in the background and just waiting for a moment to pounce. As that is Lewis Hamilton fighting it out with Valtteri Bottas in the background. Sainz is right on the back of these guys, now it is Russell on the hards. As Bottas successfully fends off his former teammate for the time being. And is still in 8th place, but Hamilton is still right behind him as they make the run through the Carva Grande. Is he going to go for it? I don't think he's going to be close enough to go for it. But, Pe but Leclerc leading this race still by a second and a half to Sergio Perez, who is about two seconds ahead of herself. It's happening just over a second mind us. He's got Norris and Sainz for company in fifth and sixth. Russell is in seventh place on those strange hard compound tyres. We've got Baltas, Hamilton and Ricardo rounding out the top ten. Hamilton is very close to the rear end of Valtteri Baltas. Could he be going for a move here? Who Could he be looking? For ninth, for eighth place in this Grand Prix, the answer to that is yes. As he's on the outside line into Ascari, he's got the move done. Has the seven-time world champ. 
He is up into eighth place, but Ballsass is still right with him and will be going for that move. Are we about to see further action though in the battle for fourth place? The Lando Norris is still right close to Max Verstappen, but actually, if anything, Carlos Sainz did a brilliant run through, his, through the power power ball guy and he's right with Norris, he's alongside him. Instead of Norris going for Verstappen, it's Sainz going for, for Norris. The two former McLaren teammates, as balls have come back at Hamilton in the background, these two are going for it. Can Sainz hold on for the time? No, he can't quite get there at this present moment in time. Uh, but ha and Hamilton is fending off Bottas for the time being, Gasly getting past Esteban Ocon in the background of all trying to get past him. And he is past him with the two Aston Martin are side by side once again. Since when did Vettel have the black tea cam? I do not know. I thought Stroll had the black tea cam because, you know, his, his dad owns the team. Why are both passes on hards? I really don't know. The hard tires are freaking useless in a 25% race. Why do we have them for 25% races? I do not know as Vettel has lost out a bit there. He's now tr trying to defend from Yuki Tsunoda. He's not going to be successful. That Tsunoda is past him. As Ricardo is right on our teammate's tail. He's going for the move. Boss has the DRS speed. Seems to be a little bit powerless to defend from the McLaren at this present moment in time. Um, side by side, who's going to get the better exit? It's Daniel Ricardo, who's up in the ninth place. Boss has still in the points, though. He is still in a point scoring position as uh, Perez has closed into Leclerc. But he's closed the gap down to 1.1 seconds. We saw this in my team season one. In my team season one, um, just, you know, a couple, you know, a couple of weeks ago, a couple of months ago, then it was Sergio, pa Charles Leclerc won the race, but Perez closed in and the gap in the line was a second and a half. Could that same thing happen? Perez will have to get shipped on if that is going to happen. Um, because at the moment he's seeding more points to Leclerc. As there's signs round the outside of the parabolic and he'll send Monza crazy if he can pull this off. He has pulled it off. The Tifosi will love to see it. The, the Ferrari getting past the McLaren. And he will be fine down the main straight as we're on to the final lap of this Grand Prix. Perez has finally broken that one second barrier. He's within a second of Leclerc. But I have a feeling it's going to be too little too late for the Mexican driver. Because this is the final lap. And at the moment he's not close enough to be able to make an impact down the back straight. Down the, I say back straight, DRS straight, or the or the, or the final straight. On the right, he's not Perez. He's in danger not having DRS here. Down the, down the straight to Parabolica, and I mean Ascari, and he won't. So Leclerc's safe on this one. He's gonna be fine on this one. It's gonna be a Ferrari win unless he fucks it a Parabolica, unless he fucks it a Parabolica or Ascari. I know it's not actual. I know it's a car of Alberetto now, the Parabolica, but I'm still calling it Parabolica because I'll call it what I want. I mean, for God's sake, the hairpin in Monaco, I've heard it called like four different names, for God's sake. Uh, but we're not in Monaco, we're at Monza. And uh, it's going to be the same man winning here as one in Monaco. Um, Leclerc around the final corner is gonna come home. He's gonna be coming across the line to win the Italian Grand Prix for Ferrari. He is delighted with that one. He's repeated what he did in 2019. He said this time he was under pressure from a Red Bull and not a Mercedes. And it was only one Red Bull, not both Red Bulls. Perez gonna have to sell for second place on that one. Uh, but he's still happy to be on the podium, it seems. Despite losing more points in his battle with Leclerc for the championship, he's happy to be second, it seems. As Leclerc sets the fastest lap, then Perez gets the fastest lap. And we come on for third place. It's not the result it could have been. Cheers, Jeff. Cheers, Jeff. Yeah, um, not the result it could have been. If I'd gotten a better start, this could have been a different race, but you know what? Coulda, shoulda, woulda. There it is then, victory in the Italian Grand Prix. An historic race and an achievement they can be immensely proud of. Talk to me, Ants. What was it that set them apart from the competition today? Well, tyre management probably played quite a large role in the outcome of this one. As ever, it's not just about speed, it's all about maintaining that speed consistently over a stint, over a race distance. So being able to keep up the lap times while still being smooth on the controls and gentle on the tyres, that's really where the race was won today. Here come our winners now, a thrilling race 
and a tremendous effort by Ferrari. Their history is well known, so it's no surprise to fans the world over to see them come out on top once again. And given Leclerc's form this season, it's no surprise that we can see the Tifosi delighted under the podium as Leclerc accepts the winning trophy. Um, it's another win for the man from Monaco. He further solidifies his lead at the top of the championship. It's soon becoming a lead that could be insurmountable before too long. It's more and more, as it, every race that goes by, it's seeming more like a matter of when and not if he wins the championship. It's Carlos Sainz said double the fastest lap, actually, uh, by nine milliseconds. And again, no DNFs in this race. Very surprising, but Bottas does hold on to the final points paying position in the end. So it is a double point score as uh, Verstappen gets past Hamilton on countback, it seems. Uh, probably because Verstappen has won a race this season and Hamilton has not. To my knowledge, anyway. Uh, but we close up further to Norris in the championship, as I said. Leclerc extends his lead out even further to 69 points the lead with what? Singapore, Japan. Singapore, Japan, Colta, Mexico, Brazil, Abu Dhabi. There are six races remaining in this season. Um, Leclerc is not too far away from... He's got... Pardon me. He's not... He's got... He is very close to having one hand firmly on that championship trophy, you know? Pardon me. As um, the gap between ourselves and McLaren comes down a little bit. It's down to 39 points, the gap, if my maths is correct. Uh, so if we pull away further from Alpine, it is the good thing. I mean, if Leclerc outscores Perez in Singapore, then that could be one hand on the championship trophy for the Monegasque driver. It's at that point also when my game crashed. Luckily, the race saved, and you just want to be back in at that point. Uh, but for God's sake, the ga this game loves to scare the crap out of me, I swear to God. And game crashes is also now why I am saving every few laps of the when I'm doing the race. But anyway, Singapore next summer. I absolutely love Singapore. I love the track. It's so much fun to drive. It's my favorite track on the calendar, honestly. My favorite race on the calendar. But for now, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, like, share, comment, subscribe, do all those stuff. I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.